Darren is without a doubt a very useful character in Wrath of the Righteous. While he can't really support the party the same way as Socio, he still has his own strengths. Most players will probably have him as their main healer. Now Darren certainly excels at that, but he can do even more. For this build in particular, Darren will be focused on both healing, supporting our party through divine buffs, and also mostly using very powerful single target spells to heavily damage the enemy, especially bosses. Alright, so let's get started. Darren comes at level 3 basically, with both selective channel and also extra channel, cementing his role as a party healer. Alright, so at level 4, Darren does not get a feat, but we can start increasing his skills and also increase his first ability point. Charisma is pretty much a given, as Darren is an oracle. As far as skills, I like increasing persuasion, because of Darren's naturally high charisma, and also knowledge arcana and knowledge world. At level 5, we have our first feat choice. As usual, I like picking the Shake It Off feat as soon as possible, mostly because of how powerful it is when it comes to increasing our saving throws. Now, starting from level 5, we also get a lot of spell picks. Some of these picks I believe are meant to be gained on earlier levels, I think this is probably a bug with respect, but let's give it a try anyways. You definitely want to have Divine Favor, one of the most powerful self buffs in the game, capable of giving you up to plus 3 to attack bonus and damage. Magic Weapon is another powerful choice at level 1, because it can give any weapon a stacking plus 1 to enhancement, that will actually improve the weapon's already existing enhancement by a plus 1, to a max of plus 5. Protection from Alignment is another useful pick, because if you choose the evil version, it will actually block charm and dominate attempts from the enemy. A very useful spell to have in battles against Succubi, for example. The other spells are somewhat disappointing, but you can go with something like Inflict Light Wounds if you're playing as a Lich or have lots of undead characters, or just Command for a crowd control effect. Now, for level 2 spells, I like getting the animal boss first. Mostly Bear's Endurance for a boost to Strength, and also Protection from Alignment Communal. Just like I said about the single version of the spell, you can protect your whole party against Charm and Dominate effects, which is very powerful. For level 6, we have our first third spell pick. My favorite one to pick would be Prayer, because of how useful this buff is, and Darren will get a lot of casts. You can basically increase your whole party's attack bonus, damage roll saves and skill checks by a plus one. This can also debuff the enemy by the same amount, but it requires you to bypass their spell resistance. Frankly, the main benefit of the spell is to pre-buff your party with it before tough battles. Alright, so at level 7, Darren will get both a feat and also an oracle revelation. Now, you might be surprised to know that I don't really care about both point blank shot and precise shot for Darren. Yes, I know he is basically built to use a crossbow when not casting spells, but I find these feats are rather unnecessary for him. Basically, his damage with a crossbow won't really ever beat high. And because of all the buffs both he and our other party members will be able to grant him, we are sure to raise his attack bonus to a point where these feats are not really necessary. So that's basically two free feats for us to spend on something else. Now my favorite pick for Darren's level 7 feat would be the metamagic feat Heighten spell. Heighten is a very powerful metamagic ability, especially for spontaneous casters because of how much flexibility it gives you. You can basically increase the level of all your spells by any amount up to 9. This will not only increase their difficulty class, but will also give you more castings of spells. Now let's talk about Darren's first revelation. 
The choice should be pretty obvious really, because we chose nature before, we definitely want the animal companion revelation, in this case the wolf. Wolves are very powerful animal companions, second only to the dog really, but they are pretty close in terms of general power. We have yet another level 1 spell pick, but like I said before, there appears to be some sort of bug with oracle respect at the moment. So let us pick Shield of Faith now, although ideally you would have picked this one before. It doesn't need any saying that Shield of Faith is a very powerful defensive spell, capable of giving any party member up to plus 5 deflection. We have yet another second spell pick. In this case, I like going with 8. 8 can give you temporary hit points, and that's always useful. Now, for another level 3 spell pick, I like going with Magical Vestment. As you might already know from my pet video, this buff is very powerful, it can increase the armor of basically any character by up to plus 5 and will stack with whatever value their armor already has, much like the spell Magic Weapon and Greater Magic Weapon. Just note that there is a maximum of plus 5, so let's say your armor already has a plus 2 enchantment. With this spell you could increase it up to plus 5, you can even use it on robes or clothing, making it even more powerful. Level 8 means yet another point in Charisma. Now we have our first level 4 pick. In this case, I definitely recommend you go with Crusader's Edge. Crusader's Edge is one of the most powerful buffs in the whole game. It will give any melee weapon, or a pet weapon even, the Outsider Bane ability, in this case Evil Outsider, so basically it's going to add plus 2d6 damage against all demons for all your attacks, pets included, do note that you cannot get this to work on ranged weapons. Not only does it add extra damage, this spell will also automatically confirm all your critical hits against evil outsiders, and even attempts to sicken them for a nasty debuff. Overall, you should definitely have this spell on every single one of your melee characters and pets. Now for level 9 we get yet another feat, in this case I like going with metamagic bolster spell. Bolster will increase the damage of our offensive spells, the reason I like picking this metamagic in particular is because we can already get in power and maximize true metamagic rods. There is a certain rod in the game for example that will both empower and maximize your spell. With Bolster, we can get the three effects all at once in the same spell. We have yet another second spell pick here. I like going with Bear's Endurance to increase our character's constitution. Now for another level 3 pick, I enjoy going with Archon's Aura. This spell is actually a very powerful debuff, capable of inflicting the enemy with a minus 2 to attack rolls and saving throws and also armor class so long as they fail the save. It is also not affected by spell resistance, so it is perfect to use against demons. The best part of the spell is that it is an aura, so basically you can cast it before battle and the enemy will be affected, without you needing to spend an action to cast the spell again. This is also a perfect choice for heightened spell, so we can keep increasing its difficulty class to make it easier for the enemy to fail the save. We have another level 4 spell choice, and for this level I like to pick Death Ward. Death Ward is pretty self-explanatory, but it is the only buff in the game that can protect you against negative levels, one of the most annoying debuffs in the whole game. Basically, whenever you are in an area against undead enemies, especially ones such as Bodaks or Whites, you definitely want to have your party pre-buffed with Death Ward. Level 10 means our first level 5 spell pick. My spell of choice would be Burst of Glory, a very powerful party-wide buff that will increase all your party members, attack bonus and saves by a plus 1 sacred and also grant them temporary hit points. You should always cast the spell before tough battles. Alright, at level 11 we get another feat. For this level I enjoy picking Improved Critical Ray. This is all in preparation for the most powerful single target spell in the game, Hellfire Ray. 
but Darren would only be able to cast it at level 12 at least. Now at level 11 we also get another revelation. My favorite revelation for this level is without a doubt friend to animals. This is an extremely powerful ability that will enhance the saving throws of all your pets permanently by a bonus equal to your oracle's charisma. And since Darren has very high charisma, you will be looking at something like a plus 10 or even higher to the saving throws of all your pets. And like I said before, this ability is always on, so it is amazing. Not only that, but if you enjoy having Darren as a summoner, you will also get free access to all the nature summons on the game. We get another level 2 pick now, but at this point we already got the most powerful ones. For spells like Remove Paralysis, I actually prefer to have Scrolls. You can pick something like Arrow of Law, but it's not really going to be doing much damage. I like getting the Align Weapon spell, because it will let Darren enhance our allies weapon to bypass the damage reduction of different alignments. In the case of demons, by making our weapons good, we will be able to bypass their damage reduction. Now we have another level 3 pick as well. You can choose for example Animate Dead if you want Darren to spam skeletons to help take the heat from your party. And this is the one I like to pick because of how useful these skeletons are. Now we get another level 4 pick and in this case I would go with Freedom of Movement. Yet another very powerful buff that will protect your characters against paralysis. And like I said before, it's also going to protect Darren from his curse, so he will no longer get staggered at the first round of combat. For another level 5 pick, I suggest you pick Spell Resistance. With this spell, you can ward your whole party with a high amount of spell resistance. It won't be enough to resist the spell of bosses, for example, because they always tend to have very high caster level, but it is going to help against enemies such as cultists, for example. Another Charisma increase at level 12. And now we also have our first level 6 spell pick. Now, there are many useful spells at this level, and your choices are basically going to depend on what other spellcasting party members you already have. If you have Nanyo, for example, as a wizard, you don't need to pick the mass version of the animal buffs. The same if you have Camellia, who can cast most of them besides Mass Cat's Grace. In my case, as I tend to have Camellia in the same party, I don't bother with the animal buffs at all. If you are a Lich and have a party with undead companions, then Harm is actually a good choice because it will be able to heal your companions with it. True Seeing Communal is yet another powerful choice for this level, but I already have Camellia casted for me. Overall, a spell I like to pick at this level is the spell Magic Greater. Mostly because Darren is a spontaneous caster, so he will always have access to the spell magic when needed, mostly against bosses. Don't expect to dispel all effects a boss has, because they tend to have higher caster level than you. But still, it is useful to be able to dispel some of their buffs. Now for level 13 we get yet another feat. In this case I like going with Improved Initiative. Mostly because by now Darren will already have access to the Hellfire Ray spell, especially when aided by the Red Salamander Ring, which gives him the spell for free. And the sooner Darren can act, the faster he can get that powerful Hellfire Ray on your enemy of choice. We have yet another level 4 spell pick now, and for this level I like going with Divine Power, a very powerful self buff that is basically an upgrade over Divine Favor. This will highly increase the chances of Darren hitting the enemy with both his crossbow attacks and also his Hellfire Ray. We have another level 5 spell pick now. You can go with something like Bone Shatter for yet another powerful single target damage spell, but I'm not really a fan of it. Mostly because ideally, against powerful enemies, you will simply have Darren use Hellfire Ray instead. You can pick something like Ray's Dead, but in this case I prefer to have it from Scrolls as well. Scrolls of Ray's Dead basically don't really cost much, since you need to have a diamond anyways to cast the spell. So my level 5 pick for Darren now would be the Pillar of Life spell. This spell not only heals your party members, it also bypasses the enemy spell resistance and will actually damage undead enemies including some very annoying ones, 
like the dreaded Death Snatcher, such as Playful Darkness, for example. Now we get another level 6 spell pick, and this one goes to Blessing of Luck and Resolve Mess. You might wonder why bother with this spell, it's basically because it lets your party member re-roll a save against fear effects. And as you might already know, there are some very annoying enemies in the game, such as the Vavakia Vanguard, for example, that are able to currently bypass the fear immunities on your characters. So having this spell on means they will basically get to re-roll their save for another try to avoid fear. At level 14 we get our first level 7 spell. Sadly, to be fair, most of the level 7 cleric spells are rather disappointing. Spells like Holy Word and all its alignment variations such as Dictum and Blasphemy they might seem good at first, but when you look at a spell, it actually does not work on creatures that have more than your hit dice in caster level. And quite a lot of demons tend to have very bloated hit dice amounts. Starting from chapter 4, for example, most of the demons you encounter, the powerful demons that is, will be pretty much immune to this spell, so there's not really much of a point in picking them. Because most of the other spells are rather disappointing, I like to go with something like Resurrection, although once again you can just use scrolls for the same effect. Alright, at level 15 we have yet another feat. In this case I like going with Spell Focus Evocation. This will not only increase the difficulty class of our Archon's Aura spell, but also in preparation for the highly powerful Firestorm spell that Darren will soon have access to. Level 15 also means yet another Oracle Revelation. You have a few different choices for this one. You can, for example, you can, for example, pick the Nature's Whispers Revelation. This will let Darren use his Charisma instead of Dexterity for armor class purposes. But ideally, your Darren will be pretty much at the back of your party, far away from the enemies so he won't really be getting hit much, besides ranged enemies such as archers. Another choice is the Spirit Boost Revelation, and this is my favorite pick for this level. Whenever you heal a character for more than they already have in hit points, so for example let's say you heal a character who is already at full hit points, all of the access points will be added as temporary hit points. I believe this ability is a bit bugged at the moment, as you can see from the description it's meant to only add temporary hit points, up to your oracle level, but for some reason at the moment there doesn't really seem to be a cap at all. Even after they fix it, it's still going to be a very powerful ability because temporary hit points are always welcome. And in any case, Darren can simply spend a casting of channel to increase your whole party's hit point by up to plus 20. We also get another level 5 spell pick, but frankly all the other spells at this level are kinda underwhelming. So honestly, I would just pick something like Raise Dead, so we can use it without scrolls, or you can also pick Life Bubble, assuming you don't have Social. In my case, because I tend to have Social together with Darren on the same party, I'm going with Raise Dead. Yet another level 6 spell pick. I like going with Joyful Rapture, because this will allow us to heal from certain annoying status ailments, but frankly it's not really needed. Like I said before, your other level 6 spell picks should depend on what other characters you have in your party. If you don't have anyone capable of casting the mass version of the animal buffs, then be sure to pick them. The same can be said for True Sin Communal. We get yet another level 7 spell, but once again, most of these spells are completely worthless. You can pick something like Bestow Grace of the Champion if you have lawful good party members that aren't a paladin. Honestly, I end up picking Destruction, even though I pretty much never use it in battle. Yet another Charisma point at level 16. Alright, so now we have our first level 8 spell pick. Once again, a lot of these spells are somewhat underwhelming. In the case of Darren, I really like picking the Shield of Law spell. This buff is extremely powerful. Because it allows you to protect your whole party against mind-affecting spells and effects cast or used by chaotic enemies, so basically against all demons. This also includes certain annoying enemies like the dreaded carnivorous crystals. Oh. 
All right, at level 17, we have yet another feat choice, and in this case, I'll be going with Greater Spell Focus Evocation. Yet another level 7 spell pick, and now, frankly, there's really nothing that we could actually use. Honestly, I end up picking Holy Word, even though, once again, you'll probably never end up using it. Now, for another powerful level 8 spell pick, I like going with Frightful Aspect. This buff will give Daren quite a huge aura, that will automatically shake in any enemy that's not immune to fear without a save. The best part about this spell is that just like Archon's aura, it is an aura, so basically so long as you cast it before battle, it is always going to be on and for quite a very long duration. What I mean is, you won't need to constantly cast the spell, it's always going to work on the enemy. It's important to note that even enemies like Baphomet and Ascari are actually not immune to Shaken and Fear. Alright, now at level 18 we have our first level 9 spell choice. This one is pretty easy, without a doubt we want Heal Mass. Now, as a Life Oracle, Daren also gets Heal Mass for free at level 8. So basically, he will have twice the casting of Heal Mass by virtue of being able to get it on both 9 and 8 spell levels. Okay, so now at level 19, we have access to our last feat. Frankly, at this point in the game, we already have access to the best ones, but in the case of Darren, you can give him something like Spell Penetration to help his Hellfire Rays hit the enemy. Now, the reason I don't actually get Spell Penetration early is because you can get a headband in the game that solves all your Spell Penetration issues for free. It is true that this headband only comes at chapter 5, but that is when Hellfire Ray also starts getting really powerful. We will also get access to our last Oracle Revelation at level 19. Now for this one, I like going with Nature's Whispers. It is going to increase Darren's armor class, but once again, by this point of the game, it's not going to matter that much. Now for another level 8 spell pick, I like going with Angelic Aspect Greater. This buff is rather useful and has a lot of effects, that protect you against evil enemies. For another level 9 spell pick, I would go with Winds of Vengeance, as it's a very powerful self buff, that not only increases Darren's speed by quite a lot, it's also going to give him total concealment against ranged attacks. Frankly, the other picks aren't really attractive, you can go with something like Overwhelming Presence, but that would require your Darren to be focused on enchantment. This is something I'd like to talk about as well, Instead of going with Spell Focus Evocation, for example, if you want, you can go with Enchantment. Frankly, I prefer Evocation because of the synergy with both Archon's Aura and Firestorm. Alright, now at level 20, we get our final ability point. There isn't much of a news in Increasing Charisma now, because Daren will cap out at 30. So let us pick Constitution instead to increase his hit points. Frankly, your spell pick at this level doesn't really matter that much, all of these spells aren't really that useful, so I just end up going with Summon Monster 9, but honestly you can pick any of the others. Alright, now let's talk about Darren's Mythic Progression. Your first Mythic ability should without a doubt be Second Mystery, in this case Second Mystic Nature. Nature is a very powerful Oracle Mystery and probably has the most powerful oracle revelations in the whole game. Not only that, but it also gives Darren access to some powerful spells. For example, we have Bark Skin, a very powerful buff that usually only druids have access to, the spell K Fangs, which as you might already know is quite insane, and also Creeping Doom, one of the most powerful summons in the whole game. One of the main benefits from this mystery is that it will also give Darren access to a full scaling animal companion. So let us pick second mystery nature. Alright, now for Darren's second mythic level, I really like going with enduring spells. Because I like to have Darren buff my party members, the sooner I get access to greater enduring spells for 24 hour buffs, the better. For mythic level 3, for mythic level 3, we will want greater enduring spells without a doubt. This is also useful because at this point in the game, we will be at chapter 3 and being subject to the very annoying chapter 3 random map encounters. So with greater enduring spells, 
we will always have most of our buffs online, even when traveling through map areas. Now for your fourth mystic ability, I like going with Last Stand. This is especially useful or hard and unfair, and in the case of Darren, while it is true that he won't be taking much damage, sometimes ranged enemies or spellcasting enemies will be able to target him, and having Last Stand ensures he will stay alive no matter what. Once again, it is also powerful against the random map encounters. Now for Mythic level 5, I like going with Mythical Beast. As always, this is a very powerful permanent boost to our animal companion. Alright, for your level 7 Mythic rank, I like going with Improved Initiative Mythic. By this point, we are getting close to be able to spam Hellfire Rays with greater power. So it does help to have Darren act before the enemy. Not only that, but with higher initiative he can also use powerful firestorms to handle annoying enemy packs. Now for your mythic ability at level 7, it is finally time to get Ascended Element Fire. This will highly increase the power of our Hellfire Rays and also our firestorms. The reason I picked this ability so late is that, well as you might have noticed, my favorite spells to use with Darren are also achieved rather late game, in this case Hellfire Ray and Firestorm. So there really isn't much of a point in getting this early for me, but you can swap the order of some of these mythical feats around in order to get Ascended Element earlier. If you prefer a Darren who's more... If you prefer a Darren who is spamming fire spells as soon as possible, in my case, I frankly prefer to have him support the party with healing spells, buffs and debuffs, so I don't rush for Ascended Element Fire. Now for Darren's level 8 mythic rank, the choice is very easy, in this case we definitely want Sorcerer's Reflex. This ability is only really powerful at high levels, because it is based on the highest spell level you can cast. With Sorcerer's Reflex, we can cast both Hellfire Ray and Firestorm, as quicken spells, as quicken spells for the first spells we cast during combat. Now for mythic level 9 you have a few different choices, you can for example use Archmage Armor, if you want Darren to have as high armor class as possible. Just like with Camellia, it is true that Darren does not get access to Mage Armor as one of his spells, but he can simply use a potion to get the same effect. Another fun mythic ability to get at this level would be Favor Metamagic Bolstered, and it is the one I like to go with. This will decrease the spell level cost for our Bolster spell, and since the cost of Bolster is just 1, it's going to reduce it to 0. Alright, so now we have our level 20 Darren at last. As usual, there are some things you can change about this build to better suit your own tastes. For example, you can get spell penetration earlier and also get and also get greater spell penetration. You can remove both spell focus evocation and change it for enchantment or just outright remove them. You can remove something like improved initiative and pick something like improved critical crossbow if you want your Darren's attacks to hit the enemy harder. This is the same for the mythic path abilities really. You can for example ignore favored metamagic bolstered improved initiative mythic, last stand even, and pick other stuff like mythic spell penetration and improved critical mythic. Like I said, it's going to depend on your tastes. Because my Darren is basically a buffer with some debuffs and also a heavy nuker with the hellfire ray spell, this build works just fine for me. Now a very important thing to talk about when building Darren is gear choice. For starters, you definitely want the red salamander ring that you can buy as soon as chapter 2 with another copy during chapter 3. This ring will give Darren a lot of fire spells, but most importantly the highly useful fiery body buff and also the extremely powerful hellfire ray spell. By having this ring equipped, you won't have to learn hellfire ray yourself. Another very useful gear for Darren is the headband called Zaori's Beauty. This headband can only really be acquired during chapter 5. However, it is extremely powerful, mostly because of the effect that lets all your allies in a 10 feet area gain the effects of the allied spellcaster feat. With this feat, you can basically ignore most of the spell resistance feats. 
In this screenshot, for example, you can see that Darren, with only the first level in spell penetration, so with only a plus 2 boost, actually managed to get 44 spell penetration, all of this coming just from the headband. Another very useful item to have on Darren is the Boots of Free Rain. This will permanently protect him with the Freedom of Movement spell, but you can also get him to cast the spell on himself. The main benefit of this, like I said before, is that it's going to make him immune to the Stagger condition, which will always come from his Oracle Curse. Basically, with Freedom of Movement, you can completely ignore his curse downside. Another powerful items that you will have for Darren, especially during the endgame, are metamagic rods. In this case, the Devouring Lust metamagic rod, that you can get as soon as chapter 3 and will maximize any of your spells. Also, we have the Grandmaster's rod, the most powerful metamagic rod in the whole game, that you can only get during chapter 5. It will both maximize and also empower your spells, while also allowing them to ignore any spell resistance and magic immunity the enemy might have. Basically insane. Last but not least, we also have the Greater Quicken Metamagic Rod that will allow Darren to quicken all of his spells. Once again, thank you for watching and I hope this video proves useful when it comes to building your Darren. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel to help it grow. Thank you once again and see you next time.